Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to make alien weapons that include curved undulating shapes. So this model was just part of something I like to do every so often, I just grab a picture of something and try to make it, because it's a really good way of practicing and testing yourself doing something that might be a little bit tricky. And this is actually from a few weeks ago where I did this, and since then I saw an amazing video which had a really cool tool on it, so what I want to do is talk about how I actually made this sort of part, this undulating bit here, and then what I'd probably do now having seen this video because I think it's a vastly better way of doing it. So just to be clear, this was built off of this image here, which is an Eldar Lance weapon. Okay, so basically space elves if you don't know, but it makes for this really nice sort of smoothly shaped object. And making these bits here was a subdivision modeling exercise for this part. It seemed like the best way to make it. There was definitely others, but this seemed like the way to get something very smooth. Now, I want to go through that first, just in case it interests you. Like I said, I think this other technique is actually better for making something that's effectively rounded with this smooth shape, but you might want to know about this anyway, so I'm going to go through that. But feel free to skip forward, and I'll put a chapter in the description so you know where to go to. So let's just delete these, and we've got this shape here, and I'm going to shift an A, mesh, and start with a cube. You can see the screencast keys in the bottom right-hand corner if you want to use those. And do note this diagram's slightly off center. In fact, actually, let's just fix that. So let's get that somewhere about there. So it's a little bit close to being right. Okay, so subdivision workflow. First thing, just get the thing generally in place. I'm gonna shift and Z to go into X-ray mode. And then I'm gonna give the basic shape. So I'm just gonna S and Y to get the correct length somewhere around there and then we're going to start with our subdivisions. So you can do this by adding modifier. I always just press Control and 3. It's vastly quicker, and we'll see this is already a mess. So I'm going to go into edge mode, and I want to make these edges here sharper so we've got a nice defined edge. So Shift and E, and then just drag to the side, and that sharpens that, or at least puts a crease on it. So Shift and E, and then again, same there. If you press N and bring up the M panel, you've got this mean crease there. So you can also fiddle around with it that way. I just find Shift and E easier. You've also got it down here with one being the maximum factor. And this could probably be a bit smoother. So let's up that somewhere there. And then we just need to start basically making the shape. Let's just scale that on everything but the Y axis. So Shift and Y and just make that a little bit wider. There we go. So you're happy with the shape or the size. And then we can start fiddling around with the different bits. So what we're going to do is go into edge mode and to get rid of that panel, shift and Z. So we can see our diagram in the background. Control and R to put an edge loop. And then I'm just going to move that up to, let's say, somewhere here. And then S to just scale it down. Let's S, shift and Y and scale that down just a little bit more. That'll probably do just for a demonstration. And then back into edge mode, shift and Z, control and R to put an edge loop there, and then let's move that along to somewhere there-ish, and then I'm going to control and B to bevel that out into two, and then S to scale those up again, and we're starting to get our sort of curvy shape. That could maybe G and Y along a bit, and then let's S to scale that up. Okay, and it's just a matter of fiddling at this point. Let's grab those, and G and Y, and then S to scale that down. And there's nothing too wrong with it. It just takes a little bit of time. Let's control and R here. Control and B to bevel that. S to scale that down to do the thin part. And then this is too wide. So let's grab those. And then let's just scale those in as well. Something like that. It could maybe be a bit more curvy here. Let's control R there. And then scale that down a little bit. And we've got our object. It's pretty all right, but there's a lot of fiddling with it. Maybe too much, maybe not enough. But the one thing that I don't like about this is I don't have that much control over this. In terms of the vertices, you'll notice if I... Let's just, let's just apply that and go into vertex mode. Now, this isn't too bad. It's relatively smooth, but we get these bits where you get the vertices all bunched up and then you get it sort of being further apart. And that's because you're putting these edge loops in and you've got this on this plane that should be a flat face there, which is just ugly. I mean, it's okay. And if you want to use this, it's totally fine. I would say if you keep the subdivision on, then it's going to be working a computer a little bit harder and it's a little bit difficult to modify after the fact. Like if I want to bevel this, so let's go into edge mode. I mean, I guess I could bevel that to somewhere like there, but it's, it's not going to be great. So, so that's the way I'd normally do it or used to do it. 
Now this one's really cool. This is my alternative to this. And I say it's my alternative. I actually saw this on a channel called Blender Secrets. I can't imagine that if you're watching my channel, then you don't watch that channel. But if not, check it out. Awesome tips in really nice little short bite-sized chunks. They're absolutely fantastic. And he was using this to make a knife. And immediately I thought of this as a tool just to do this. So I'm going to shift an A mesh and I'm going to bring in a plane. And I'm going to R and Y to rotate that on the Y by 90. So I've just typed in 90 and then I'm just going to scale that down. So it's nice and small. G and Z that up to somewhere there, right in the middle. And now we get to the bit that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is... Go into vertex mode, just grab that and G and Y and bring that along to where I want it to start and then do the same for the other one, G and Y. And then this is the bit where you get a lot of control. I'm going to control an R like I would normally and I'm going to put my edge loops up to whatever I want my vertex count to be going around this. So if I want it really smooth, I'm going to put it really high. Less smooth, I'm going to sort of put it down. Now, this has the negatives, but you don't get to control this after, like you would do the subdivision surface modifier, but it's quite nice because everything's going to be really evenly spaced. So I'm going to go with something like that and then escape. So we've now got all those edge loops. And then this is the fun bit. Just grab vertex and you do need to do the ones on the two extremes for this to work. And then I'm just going to G and Z put that up to there and then I'm going to do the one on the other end as well. So this is going to be a lot more intuitive because we could just follow this along. But instead of having to follow with every bit, I just need to put them up every so often. So I'm probably going to do one there, one there. Let's do one here. And I'm probably doing more than I need to, but I have noticed that whenever you've got something that sort of goes a bit smoother, you want to emphasize that. So I'm probably going to do another one maybe here. There. Probably one there. That's probably about it. So that quick. And then all you do is you select those ones that are sticking out. Pretty easy so far. Now what this tool is going to do is calculate all of these ones in between making a nice smooth curve along this line. So how are we going to do that? We're going to press N to bring up the M panel. We're going to go into edit, which for me is tiny because I've got other things. And we're just in loop tools. If you don't have loop tools, edit, preferences, and then just type in loop. I think it comes automatically activated now with Blender. But if not, that's what you need to tick and then save preferences. And then we're just going to click curve. How cool is that? I mean, literally so smooth in seconds. Brilliant. Now, if you need to fiddle around with some of these, it will change some of the bits. Okay, regular will change the way that these are set out. I don't like that. And your interpolation, if you go to linear, just does flat lines. You don't want that. You want cubic. I don't know why it's called cubic. Basically, it means that you've got this nice flow to it. And that's you pretty much sorted at this point. With that done, all you need to do, bear in mind that my origin I set up so it was in the middle of my thing or cylinder that I wanted to have. Just go to add modifier, screw, and then it's going to look weird. We're just doing this in the Y direction and you've got that. You can just quickly come into here and change the steps to have that as high or low as you want. I'm going to go for 128. So it's nice and smooth. You could do more or less and you can always change that afterwards. Now, just some things to note if I isolate this. It's not going to like this bit at the end. Uh, that's because we've got effectively an overlap of where those vertices are. If you just come into edit mode, something like that. If you just select the ones at the bottom that are here, and just delete those. That'll get rid of that. And you'll just need to fill in that end that you've got there. So that's my new way of doing it. If it's going to be a round object and I need something smooth, this is going to be my way of doing it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, if I just apply that and then just go into edge mode, all I'm going to do is select those edges there and press F and then select those edges there while clicking Alt and press F. And we've got that sorted. Oh, so fast, so less fiddly and so much more precise. Absolutely love it. And again, please do check out Blender Secrets. That's where I got that tool. They were using it really quickly to make the edge of a curved blade. So no credit to me for that. I'm just looking at a different use for it. As always, if you found that useful, please do hit the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you are interested in supporting the channel more, head on over to the Patreon where any support is really, really appreciated and you get things like these tutorials a week ahead of time without adverts and you'll get the files. So, for example, this file will be up there as well for you to have a look at, as well as many other cool things. Have a great day, guys.